Coming up on iPads in the Classroom, telling a story with more than text. Hi, my name is Guy Trainin and this is iPads in the Classroom from Tech Edge and today we're talking about telling a story with more than text and this time I want to focus on visuals as an integral part of any story you tell, whether it's narrative or expository, visuals differentiate and help make uh, the story different and help our students understand how text and picture can merge together and tell a richer story or a different story and that's important for them as part of composition especially in this multi-model world and it's also important for them as they consume these kinds of stories. Let's start with Haiku Deck. I've talked about Haiku Deck before and I think it's one of the great options especially for younger students or for students when you really want them to focus on the visual because in Haiku Deck you're creating a presentation where the visual is at the forefront and the text kinds of takes a back seat. So you can create a new story. So uh, let's create a new story using the plus. Here's my new story and my new story is going to be about China. We visited China um, early in the year. So that's where I have a lot of visuals and we choose a style. So I can take, uh, choose, uh, I'll choose this one. And then you tap to edit and let's try our China tour and we've got our first slide and then we can add an additional slide and we can choose what format it takes and we really want that format to be with an image and I want for my photos and they ask for access and of course you can do that and this is a great way to uh, Here's one photo, working with teachers. Uh, this is a great way to include things that you've collected with your students. So if you have a field trip or a visit to a museum or anything like that, you can take pictures and then bring them into something like Haiku Deck and talk about it in a visual format. So now the picture is imported and I can add text to that picture or you can create a different setup. I like this one. And now the text is on top and on the bottom. And I can add another picture. Uh, let's say, hmm. We'll go to the same place, go to my photos. And you can see that this is very easy to uh, maneuver. Um, this is kids working. Let's add this image and you can see how very quickly you can create a very powerful presentation where the visual is the central point and the text supports the visual because there's not a lot of room for text and I would support trying to have kids focus on the picture and just text that explains just enough. So this is how Haiku uh, Haiku Deck works and when you're saving and sharing you can save it of course as a Haiku Deck and uh, you can here the category is education and then you can see all your options for sharing you can use social networks students usually don't have access to them which is perfectly fine but you can also email them or copy the link and embed the link somewhere so this is a way to send it to a teacher or send it to a to one of their friends and it's a way to make sure that this is available. It is important to know that you can also lock it so other people can't see it. So you can have restricted or totally private and these are all possible if you pay for the pro version. So if you don't pay for the pro version it will stay public. Now again if students are creating presentation they don't necessarily have to use their name and then if it's public there's no problem. You obviously have to make sure that there aren't any pictures there that should not be shared for privacy reasons. So these are ways to actually talk to students about what's appropriate and what's not, what's allowed and what's not. Digital citizenship it's a, a great way to do that. So, and you can see that they, we have here multiple stories that you collect uh, on the go. 
very easy to use, very intuitive, that's Haiku Deck. The next one I want to talk about is called Adobe Slate. And uh, Adobe is a company that uh, has an emphasis on the visual and understands visuals and the way they interact with text very, very well. And Adobe Slate allows you to create. So let's again create a China tour. And what Adobe Slate does, I think, that is different than Haiku Deck is that it allows you uh, to manipulate more, but it also allows you to uh, have a lot more text. So if your emphasis is actually on more text integrated in a magazine style, you can, uh, you can definitely do it here. So uh, here's China and we'll take different kinds of photos. Um, and it's loading. And I can now add a photo grid. Okay, so they say add some photos. Here are some photos, working with teachers, working with kids. And more working with kids. Okay, so we brought it in and now you can see that it organized them in a specific way and that doesn't mean that we can't change it, but this is one way to add to our story and we can add a caption. Now I can add text and you can see that you can add as much text as you want. So you can actually uh, write an extensive a story, right, and add a lot more to it, and you can control font and all of those things, and then when we're done, we can share our story again, and we can share it on the networks, but you can also put it on your uh, clipboard and email it, so those are easy ways to, uh, to help. And you can see that you can control, for example, if the author is shared or not shared and things like that. So that's a really an easy way to do that. And again, you can make it available on a private channel only with a password or you can make it available to everybody. And again, you have to carefully consider what they're including there and what kind of information it is. And if you're working in a school district that have limits on what students can share, I would definitely consider that. But the other side of this is that if you want to share it with parents and others, you must make sure that you're connecting it the right way so they can uh, see it. And now you can scroll through and see the story we created. And just to go back to stories created by others, uh, here's the story and you can see you scroll down from it. It interacts very well. You can do fonts of different sizes to highlight certain things. You include the pictures like that. So it's a great way to share complex stories with different effects. Students can again focus on the visual. So this is Adobe Slate, a great, great option. The last one, and that's one that many students like using, is called Comic Life. And kids are very familiar with comic strips and comic books. And, a, and Comic Life can help create those with a focus. But this is what I've learned from a lot of teachers who are doing that. You need to have a little bit of discussion before kids use this because some kids are very familiar and very comfortable with that genre. Others are not as familiar. So you want to expose them to this genre, to the options and to the choices you make when you create. So this is our China tour. This is another example of how you can create just one page in a in that, and again, you can share it in multiple ways and you can print it out as well, or you can start editing it. And in this case, uh, I've got just pretend uh, text here, but I can add a text bubble saying, uh, let's take the words that are there. So you can add text. And here it is showing up as part of 
that comic strip. I can move it around a little bit to make sure that it's in the right spot, right? And so you can take photos. What we're seeing a lot of students do is actually create the art first on paper and then bring it into the iPad through the camera and integrate it into a story. So that's a, another way to use a comic life. And you can see I have a collection of different things. And if I start a new one, you can see that you can choose different formats. And that's a great first step for students because that allows them to start grappling with what what the theme and the mood of the story is going to be. And that's uh, partially explained through the templates that they include in Comic Life. So this is a great way to tell a story with action happening again, just like Haiku Deck. Here the text takes a second seat to the visual and to the organizational. And that's a great conversation to have with students about what is effective, what is not. How do you create this multimodal uh, composition that delivers what you want effectively? So today we talked about telling a story with more than text. And we talked about three great apps to do that. And there are lots of other great apps to do that as well. So tell us about them. And I'll see you next time on iPads in the Classroom.